We've got 32,000 acres of country here, 15,000 acres of natural open downs and 17,000 acres of timber and on that we're, at the moment we're running about 5,000 sheep which is comprised of about 2,000 breeding ewes and then we had a 1,400 lambs last year and then we're running about um, 500 breeding cows and about 100 heifers here at the moment. With the exclusion fencing that we've done, we've done 14 kilometres of our own on our southern side and then we've done 12 kilometres with our neighbour on our northern side and we've done about 9 kilometres on our western side. Oh, the number one tip for fencing I think is the preparation of the fence line. Um, what we would like to see people try and do is to have the fence line sitting on some high ground so that you've got a natural camber to the outside which then allows you to drain the water at the bottom of that drain and I think it's terribly important that um, people don't rush in and just flat grade or do something like that or even go in reverse but um, actually have a camber and sit the fence on the top of the camber because it does make a lot of difference in 10 or 15 years time when you've got instances of erosion sort of happening when we get some very good rainfall events. Yeah, so with our floodgate, um, we, we're really conscious of trying to make sure that there's structural integrity in the fence. So what we've done here is uh, we've driven drill stem into the ground at least 1.7 metres and then just screwed the top of the post on, onto that. And uh, it's terribly important on the floodgates, you try and keep the top of the fence as straight as you possibly can so you're not putting pressure on your posts trying to be pulled out of the ground. So that's what we've done here. And then we've hung um, three sections of the fence, um, one on top of the other basically to the bottom. And that's allowed us to have an apron here on the bottom of about a metre, which um, still gives the fence integrity as far as uh, the movement of animals sort of between. This is on our boundary between the two properties. But we've also tried to allow the fence to swing as freely as we possibly can for when the um, bigger flow of water comes along the creek. Rolling out the wire, we do that off the back of a truck. Some people have done it off a trailer, and but we find the truck is easy because it's just got its own motor. You don't have to drag it around like if you've got a trailer. Um, so what we've done is um, just added a little bit of an extension onto the back of the truck so that uh, we can just roll the netting off the back of the truck. It then lands on the, the little bit of gear that we've built and then it drops down into a slot which keeps it in place. So we use either a round pipe or an RHS pipe as the pipe in the middle of the, uh, of the roll, but one man can easily get the netting off the truck onto the um, unit we've built to roll the netting out. And the, the other thing that's very important that is just to make sure that when you're rolling your netting out, you actually roll the netting out over the top, not underneath because that way when you've finished your roll, if you get to the end of it and don't realise, it doesn't take off and want to roll itself back up again. When you roll it out over the top, it'll actually just plant in the ground.